I don't think I have to introduce this gentleman, but I'm going to anyway. Carl Edwards, of course, drives a number 99 subway car. And uh, Carl, welcome uh, to Phoenix International Raceway once again. And uh, we'll start off by, before we get some Q&A going here, uh, just ask you a question about how the weekend has gone for you so far. Uh, everything's been going really well this weekend. It's, um, it's actually been uh, probably, it's one of the most fun weekends I've had in a long time. Our car was very fast in, in all the practice sessions. We weren't that good in qualifying, but then we came back yesterday and ran really well in the, the final two practices. So it is the Subway Fresh Fit 500. Uh, Jared Fogel and Brian Bumgardner are going to be here any minute. We just filmed a segment for for uh, television that was pretty funny. Brian uh, threw olives and green peppers at me a lot, <laughs> so that was pretty fun. But this, this weekend is... Uh, it's a good weekend for a number of reasons. I, I really like Phoenix. I'm getting used to the new new pavement. I feel like we're getting faster each time we come back here on the new pavement. I felt like we had the old the old track uh, down pat pretty well, but but hopefully it's uh, it's a good fast race for us. And we've got Subway on the car being the title sponsor of the race. There's, you know, it would be a, a huge event for us to win. And um, it's been almost two years since we've won a points race. I didn't realize that until. Uh, until I get to looking at the calendar in uh, Vegas is next week, so we would like to end our our uh, 70 race losing streak here at Phoenix like we did a couple years ago. That would be really really nice. So that's you know that's my outlook in a nutshell. Carl, how's the Gen 6 car? You really have to get used to it here on this track. Uh, totally different. I'm I'm assuming that it was at Daytona last week. Right, it's completely different than Daytona. And I don't think anyone knows exactly how it's going to race. We all hope that it races really well. The track conditions are going to be a little bit different than we all expected. It it appears that the the track will be faster. It might be a little easier to drive because it has more grip, and so you might uh, you might see a little more passing and a little you know maybe m more than just one line, maybe two or three lines. So I, I don't think anyone really knows yet. We're all um, you know, I think we're all talking about all the drivers, all the crew chiefs are talking about pit strategy, two tires, four tires, track position, and, you know, trying to get a strategy for this race. All right, so we got some questions for uh, Carl. Right here. Here is Frank Roderick. I've heard Jimmy Fennig is a man of a few words. How, how are you getting along? Uh, we're getting along really well, actually, and I think that's, it's easy right now because the car is fast. This weekend has been, has been a lot of fun. The way he works with the with me, with the engineers, with the crew is is a little bit different. He's um, he's he's he tells people exactly what he wants. He's very um, authoritative in you know his uh, the way he runs things, but he also lets people um, lets people kind of you know ha have a little bit of autonomy in, in their specific job. Like I noticed that my my tire guy and my shot guy they, they're a little more free to do projects and things that, that that are interesting to them which uh, y as long as we keep going fast and that's that's great so I, I'm I'm real excited but I still haven't learned Jimmy Finnick I still don't understand him completely but I have a feeling by the end of this race in the next few weeks I'll I'll learn a lot more uh, Reed Spencer with the New Scar Wire Service. I'm looking at the qualifying results from Daytona and here. Are the Fords still looking for straight line speed at this point, um, or is it something else? That's a really good question. I haven't seen the Dartfish stuff or segment times yet, so I don't know exactly where we lost our uh, our time in qualifying. But in the last two practice sessions there, I don't think anyone had anything for for the 55 car. But but I felt like our you know, our Ford was, was really fast compared to the rest of the field. So I, I don't know yet. I mean, we'll find out when we race. But I know Doug and the guys at the engine shop have worked very hard. I've had specific complaints about, you know, what I'd like out of the engine, and, and they've addressed a lot of them. And so I, I think I think we have good things to look forward to, but we really won't know until we get out there in the race and you can kind of see where you're strong and where you're weak. Right back here. Carl, not to belabor the two-year thing, but how, how have you dealt with that? I mean, you sounded so resolute in your in-car interview with Daytona last week, dealt with yeah. the frustration and everything. I mean, just how have you handled all this? I, I've handled it the, the same way that uh, they have handled these things in the past, and that is just to, you know, to keep working as hard as I can, to maintain confidence and, and to remember that, that these things happen. I mean, there are cycles or ups and downs and so for me personally it's been <laughs> a lot of uh a lot of you know self analysis hey am i doing things the right way am i am i doing the job i need to do and and then following through with that make sure i'm doing the right things and as long as i do that it's uh, as frustrating as it is to 
you know, to not uh, be winning 10 races a year right now, it, it's still, it's acceptable to me because I'm doing the best I can. And as long as I do that, then I'm, then I'm okay with it. But, uh, it, it definitely, it's trying, you know, it's not, it's not fun. I, I yesterday after practice, I was, we went, uh, we went hiking and, um, I was like, man, I'm in a great mood. You know, I just felt good, and I realized that's just that's because we're running well. I mean, it feels better to run well. I, I really like that. Do you feel like you're closer to a win? Yeah, I, <laughs> that's a, not a really fair question for me to answer. I always feel like we're going to win next week. I mean, I really, I, I go in every race, and I feel like we're going to do it. We're going to win this thing. And um, you know, some people call that insanity the way we've been running lately. But but I. Um, I really do feel like we're close. I, I feel like our testing went very well at Charlotte. We're fast. We're fast in practice here. I think that there's still a big unknown as as to how fast we'll run on a mile and a half. But if we go to f to Vegas and we run well and we can lead some laps and dominate, it'll I, I it'll be very good. You know, I'll feel very confident then. But we just we have to go do it. It really doesn't matter how how I feel. We have to go do it. Gentleman right here has a question. Alicia, right here. Hi, Carl. Rip, ripping off of the Charlotte Observer. Um, you brought up the 55 car. I'm just curious. To watch somebody doing what Mark is doing at 54, do you marvel at that? I mean, is it something you can imagine yourself doing at that age? I'm glad you asked that because I sat in the car yesterday and watched them park that car and not run it anymore. And I watched Mark walk away and I thought, that, it, that man is an inspiration. I mean, he truly is, a, is an inspiration to all of us in the sport. I mean, he's a... He, before I, uh, while I was driving four-cylinder modifieds around the St. Louis area, he was the guy I looked up to in racing. He's the reason that I started working out and paying attention to physical fitness, and um, and and that was 20 years ago, 15, 18 years ago. And now, to be parked next to him in the garage and to see that he's still doing it at that level, he's that passionate. I mean, him and I talked about it the other day. He said he just has this desire that's never, never changed. I, I think that that is, it's truly inspiring, and and it's um, it's someone I can really look up to. I think he's uh, he's a heck of a man, and he's a heck of a competitor. How much when he talked about, talk about how he didn't really know. He said that he didn't really know early in his career if doing all this physical training necessarily made a difference. But he says that he has no doubt that his longevity is completely contingent on that. Yeah, obviously, you know, you're into fitness. Could you talk about how things have changed in the sport as far as that right. sort of being coming a part of the job requirement? It seems like a lot of drivers are, are understanding the value of, of fitness, but I think that that's something that you see a, as a culture. I think all of us are, are realizing that, you know, obesity is an epidemic with our children and that, that uh, health care costs and all these things that come along with um, the lack of fitness are, are burdens on all of us. So, um I know me personally, I started working out because I just had a lot more energy and time than I had money, and it was something I could do for free to hopefully help with my racing, as with Mark as an inspiration. But now I realize that it's something that actually helped me with with my life, my quality of life later on. So I'm fortunate enough, you know, we're up here on behalf of Subway, and, um, you know, with Subway and Kellogg's and Aflac and some of my other partners who really take fitness and, and nutrition seriously, it's 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 pretty cool for me to uh, to have a, an example like Mark Martin right there, parked next to me in the garage, who's you know, who's validating all of those things that you know that this this is something positive that can can benefit you. MikeHembrySpeed.com. Carl, a lot of people are pointing toward Vegas as a track where this car is going to kind of be defined and so forth. Do you, you see that too? And, and what what is it about Vegas that's going to be so important? Well, I think Vegas is the it's a model mile and a half racetrack it's it's high banked it's fast it um it historically has had a couple of grooves and i think you're gonna if the if the car if this car and um and our series goes there and puts on a really good race i think it it's it's gonna bode well for the rest of the season and the and the future of the car but and if it doesn't it's gonna be time for for all of us to say how can we make this better you know starting at nascar at nascar and um and I think they've said as much. They've said we're this is a moving target. We're not afraid to to change things and make it better. And I think that that aside from the competition, what you just said is why everyone's. Yeah, you know, it's another reason everyone's looking towards Vegas to see what what things are going to be like. 
In the back. It's the 50th year here racing in Phoenix. What has been your best and worst moment here? 50th year. Um, that's really neat. Um, I'd say still to this day, my best moment at Phoenix was uh, in 2001, the Copper World Classic. I uh, passed uh, a legend and one of my heroes, Jack Hewitt, in turn three to make the feature race. And um, and that was really, really neat. I, I'd um, really we'd put all of our eggs in one basket, come out here for that race, and and uh, and that we made enough money making the feature to go on to Irwindale after that. So that was probably my best uh, my best moment. I haven't had really had a bad moment yet here at Phoenix. I really almost every time I leave this track, there's it's been a positive experience.